We are recording. Hello, my lovelies. Um, I am back after quite a hiatus. Um, Got to throw some shows up, but this may be the first one to come back after a little time off. And I want to welcome you all. I call the show Ginger Archie, and you can find it um, anywhere you can find any podcast. But if you just go to wearelibertarians.com, there's a ton of awesome shows. My show's there, The Big Show, which is really informative. Uh, you could rely on them to give you weekly, actually nightly content right now. Um, this is March 27th, correct? Yes. Uh, so today I have on Ginger Archie, my friend and libertarian Scottish extraordinaire, Anthony Samaroff. Hello, Anthony. How are you? Hello, Trishy. I <laughs> thought you were going to call me um, libertarian extremist. Oh, there, okay. Like but I like extraordinaire. I, I do like to think that I am quite extraordinary. Um, but yeah, I'm very touched and glad to be included in this <laughs> inaugural or re-inaugural edition is. of Ginger Arky. Yeah. And, um, you know, when I was uh, a young man, a younger man, uh, I had a ginger girlfriend that was still in school. Don't worry, the age difference wasn't that How big. young were you and when long. was she in school? <laughs> um, she was ginger. And <laughs> one of... And I... Uh, and was teased by a boy in school for being ginger and she basically told him that her boyfriend loves ginger girls uh, to which he replied that I should be shot so uh, <laughs> uh, so so um, uh, you, you, I'll leave it to your discretion whether I just told her that I really like ginger girls to make her feel less bad about that or I was honest, but the funny thing is, I wasn't shot. So who's the big guy now, little school <laughs> kid? Yeah, yeah. You said I should be shot, but I wasn't. Survived it. Yeah. That was. And, was that a really gangster experience for you? I might be using um, terminology and some young people uh, terms that you might not be familiar with, Anthony. Being over yeah, being in Scotland, a, youth culture is different. Well, you know, the, the thing is, people think that in Scotland, like, it's just almost like a third world country where we just walk around the mountains in skirts and we, like, don't have any modes of transportation. Uh, but that's not true. Actually, we have bikes now. So you can go around the, the mountain on a bicycle. I know you're lying because I have been to Scotland. Number one, it's a beautiful country and the people were extremely kind and they have all the uh, updated technology and they still have mountains and bikes. So I actually yeah. went up to the Highlands. It's probably one of my favorite places in the world. Beautiful. Right. Yeah. There's a lot of very lovely scenery in Scotland. So it is a place to come and visit at some point if you want. Yeah, we've got two major cities, Edinburgh, Although there. we call it Edinburgh mm -hmm. and Glasgow. Edinburgh, they say, is more beautiful, but Glasgow is where you want to go if you want some crazy nightlife. So if is anyone it's, ever I comes haven't to been Scotland, to Glasgow. Um, I went to should, Edinburgh, if I'm saying that right. Edin and actually, Edinburgh. if you could tell by my name, um, Stuart. Uh, Stuart. I have family that came over. And so, I, of course, I oh. went to the castle and saw some of my uh, long, long uh, lineage there which was really interesting. The city was great, met That's some cool. really cool people. And then we went up to Inverness. We, we took a car and drove up there. And, and that oh, was yeah, beautiful. Oh yeah, I love all that, those places. Yeah, but so didn't get I to go to Glasgow. Now I'm upset. Well, if you want to have a crazy party time, next time in your Scot you're in Scotland, come visit me in Glasgow. And that goes for most people. I don't <laughs> want to say anyone in the libertarian community. Have you seen yeah. the people that follow me on social media? You may regret oh, that. <laughs> Actually, you, most you, of them are really cool. <laughs> yeah. 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 It only takes one or two it's assholes yes. to pee in the punch bowl. <laughs> yes. Uh, that's very true. And I have told Anthony and actually I've told my children, which I don't get enough street cred for that. The show is marked explicit. So you can say whatever yeah. you want. So, so you really weren't kidding when you said that it was gangsta. Yeah. It's fucking gangsta. Can't you right. tell I'm, I'm in my suburban home in my basement with my anarchy flag. Yeah, I know. Yeah. 
So. You just better. You just better be careful. Otherwise, someone with a red anarchy fly flag will come by and shoot you in a drive-by. <laughs> well, you know it's funny, Anthony. Um, well, we're not even talking about COVID right now, but I'm enjoying this, so I don't really care because it's my show. Um, so my my mother-in-law got me this cup for Christmas. Uh, the wrong kind <laughs> but actually, of anarchy. I know a lot of anarchists that don't put a hyphen in front of it and use the traditional anarchy symbol. I actually think, who I think is actually pretty right-wing, Lou Rockwell uses the red one as well. Um, That's cool. Yeah, I've got so. a t-shirt. I've got a t-shirt with a red one on it as well. Do you? I I I was told that it was the wrong kind of anarchy at a libertarian meetup once, but you know, it kind of looks pretty cool. As long as it looks cool, it's all yeah. good. This is this is true. Um, well, optics are everything, aren't they? Yeah, I it's, I just love love this idea of the yellow anarchy gang and the red anarchy gang uh, doing dropping hip hop rhymes and shooting each other in drive bys. I, I hope it doesn't happen. <laughs> I hope it doesn't happen. It's kind of like an like... East Coast West Coast thing. Maybe? Yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah. know if you're familiar with rap in the nineties. I, 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 I know enough about it to get okay. by. Hey, I'm a badass gangster rapper. Oh, are you? Yeah, I am. <laughs> the thing is, no one ever says to me, hey, Anthony, why won't you come rap on my new album? It's my lifelong fantasy to craft an epic work of hip-hop poetry, the likes of which the world has never seen and will never see. Will you make it come true for me? Is this something that you can do for me? A tale that's so improbable, it resonates ineffably, sending ripples through the galaxy. It chronicles our most proximal obstacles canonically to demonstrate that while they seem insoluble superficially, they're eminently solvable. It's probable we'll change the course of history. After we deliver all human Humanity most laudably from fear and doubt into an age of harmony will embark on a trilogy. Check my words for credibility. I'm just saying. Is that original? It is original, yeah. Did you just freestyle that or is it you've I committed it to I memory? I committed it to memory. Well <laughs> okay. I thought I com- I thought I thought I, I thought I'd committed it to memory, but um judging by the delivery it was a little bit uh, skippy. Did you get a lot of uh, good uh, feedback from the youth culture for that? Um, it was better than what I could do. It was good, by the way. I'm <laughs> just asking. So, <laughs> next question. Does your cup have cats on it, Anthony? I told you it, this is not a fancy show. It just says Costa Rica on it. Hmm. It's actually a Starbucks cup. Now you just gave a free plug to Starbucks. They're not even Ew. sponsoring this shit, Trisha. You fucking corporatist. I'm really mad at drinking out of my red mug right now. Really? Mm-hmm. Do you know what's look, funny? It's got a frog on it. I know that some people will just be listening to this, but that frog does look cool as fuck. It is a cool as fuck frog. Thank you for your cool Scottish frog, frog, Anthony. I really appreciate that. So, so we're going to talk we about the elephant in the room. Thing? Or the elephant um, on earth. I saw this great comic book on Facebook, which was like an elephant on a therapist's couch. Mm-hmm. As some of you know, I'm a therapist. <laughs> and the elephant's saying, even when I stand right in the middle of the room, they still ignore me. <laughs> That's, That's good pretty one. good. That's I actually, good. I don't know if you've, I snort when I laugh too hard and I have a ridiculous affection for dad jokes, pun memes and everything. And in, in those that falls into those categories. They just what really other unattractive, my, what uh, other unattractive habits do you have? <laughs> I, I have a lot. Do you, do you bite your toenails? Ew, I've never bit my nails either. No. Like that's gross. But I snort when I laugh. I like pun memes. Um, I get really excited going to Aldi's. I actually, at one point in my life, was engaged to Aldi International. Mm-hmm. Um, On it, Facebook? Not that they'll admit it, but we both, you know. That's really funny because, uh, see here, we have like a store called Asda. Like for you guys, it's not really a superstore. Walmart actually bought it up because it's nothing like as big as a Walmart, but by British standards, it was like the big store. And my friends could never understand, well, some of them, why I was like, oh, we're going to Asda. It is a glorious cave of wondrous things. I always loved to go to Asda because it was never, you know, in the middle of town or anything like that. It was always like a little bit out where the land was cheaper so they could get a 
a bigger store. But I just loved looking at all the different shit that they had in the shop that they didn't have anywhere else. I think now that I'm a libertarian, it, I have been for 10, 12 years. It's like, see, when you're like on the left, you're like, when you go into a big supermarket, you're like, this is so terrible. They're exploiting all these farmers. But see, once you're a libertarian, you're like, wow, all this cool shit came from all over the world <laughs> just for me. Thanks to the International Division of Labor. Tis a thing of wonder. Thank you, Adam Smith. By the way. It's fucking true, though. I mean, who doesn't want a bunch of good shit at your fingertips where you're at? And then, um, do you like Milton Friedman? I'm going way off. I do have ADHD. That's another unattractive. No, this is cool. This is this is like a really. This is a good show. Oh, I'm 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 uploading this. Not a ten. I'm uploading this to Scottish Liberty podcast feed as well. My people love this shit. Uh, so are you, f- I, I was, uh, I know you came a little bit from the left um, and then I came from the far right and was very political uh, and then, yes, uh, I know, I, I know. I've seen the era of my ways and I'm paying for it, trust me. Um, but I did always enjoy Milton Friedman, the economist, and he does a thing called the pencil. Have you ever seen that? Yes, I've seen yes. that. Well, I think of that every time I'm in a store, like you said, as a libertarian, I just think, how many people were involved in bring this to me for $4.99? I know. Oh, my God. And people are so ungrateful. Yeah. But here's my tie into the theme of today's show. Because with the COVID thing, it's like people are used to just going down to the supermarket and getting a pineapple for like, I don't know what it costs where you live, like a dollar for a pineapple. Um, they don't actually realize that for most of history, a pineapple was like a luxury item. There was a king, uh, what was the name of the king, um, who actually, let me see if I can, I've got it right here. Someone nicely put it for me on Facebook. Is it going to um, be King George? Because, you know, we know where your loyalties lie. <laughs> it was It was uh, Charles II, but hmm. someone thought it was George. Uh, it was Charles II actually had a pineapple on his mantelpiece to show how wealthy he was. Um, so... Uh, this, these things, a pineapple would cost thousand, the equivalent of thousands and thousands of dollars today. They used to make these um, old buildings with, that had domes on them, like with with these squares, like to make them scraggly like a pineapple. Is as, that where uh, that comes? There's a lot of um, Victorian yeah. architecture here in the States that have pineapples as a design. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. It's because pineapple was an incredible luxury once upon a time. And we get all this shit for free. Everyone... And the mainstream seems to hate the market and think capitalism sucks, but they don't actually appreciate the wonderful things that they've got. And I think if one silver lining comes from this COVID nonsense, I hope that when things get back to normal and people can go out and enjoy stuff, they really appreciate the things that they weren't able to enjoy uh, during this time. You know, it's funny you say that uh, yesterday because I'm in lockdown and I actually ended up getting pretty much okay, laid off. About your kinky habits, okay. Me. All right. Then I'll skip to the next story. Um, so I, we went out for a hike yesterday just to get mm. out of the house. I mean, even just walking outside your home, I do live in like a cul-de-sac and it's, there's not a lot of beautiful things to look at. Um, just going out and doing that, there were so many people out and it was just like, there would never be this tremendous amount of families and friends out walking and hiking at this time of day in the middle of the week. Mm. Had they not realized that's a luxury now to be able to go out and do something. Mm. Um, and I do think, you know, it sounds so, uh, well, you know, you shouldn't see the silver lining and what the government's doing to lock us down. You know what? There are way worse times in history where people sure. wrote some of the most beautiful things and they had some of the most beautiful mo- movements and they were so oppressed. And so we've really not had much oppression, even though I can go on all day about the state, but, sure. uh, so we've got a little bit now that's for sure. And, uh, it does make you appreciate the, the finer things in life, even the simple things. Well, I've pineapple. definitely, <laughs> like a pineapple, mm-hmm. I've definitely been enjoying my strolls around the block to keep my body active because most of my usual activities are cancelled. So you've got to find something to do to, to keep moving and, and stuff like that. So I think it's good. I mean, I think it's good to maintain a positive attitude. If you look at people like, um, damn, what was that guy who he ran for president? He wrote the self-help book. However, Harry Brown. Harry Brown. 
Brown. You know, oh, I love Harry yeah. Brown. Yeah. He brought people through with a positive message I as really well. I really loved his message. Yeah. Yeah. And like, you know, people say that um, Murray Rothbard was always a very positive guy. So we've got to shine a little light in dark places. You know, no one wants, uh, no one's going to join your movement if it's like moan, 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 moan. Mm -hmm. And hell knows, you know, there's plenty to moan about. You, uh, I've got a laundry list longer than I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Choose your metaphor of things that I have to moan about the system. But, um, you know, you can attract. You win more flies with honey than vinegar. Um, That's but, very true. Yeah, yeah. Um, or lipstick. But <laughs> well, I'm not really sure that it's as flattering on me <laughs> as it is on you, Trishy. But, um, you know, that's harking back to my goth phase. <laughs> oh no, did you wear black lipstick? Uh, a couple times, but I never really thought it suited me, but I was, uh, eyeliner definitely did it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, eyeliner helped me pull. I could, right I could, girls. I was a fan of the Trent Reznor, Nine Inch Nails mm -hmm. eyeliner. I mean, that was yeah. some good stuff. Um, not sure. that I'm old enough to remember it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. It, it was your uh, older siblings or your cool uncle I, that. Yes. That's it. That's, that's what it was. So you're a therapist and you're talking about being positive during these times. And I actually wanted to touch on that. So um, a lot of people that, especially people that uh, deal with depression, anxiety, maybe even like extroverts like myself that feel very isolated and disconnected, even though we have uh, this wonderful technology where I'm talking to you in Scotland right now and I live in Ohio. Sure. Ohio. But um, what can they do to kind of reset themselves and, uh, you know, look for the best, be happy in these times. Are, is there something that they can do? And then also, where can they go to find your videos and books and um, your help? Oh, that's really cool of you. Well, Be Yourself and Love It podcast is pretty cool, I think. I'm more known for my libertarian stuff, but that one has a reasonable sized audience. And if you kind of Anthony Samra off YouTube, I've, I put all the live streams I do on Facebook eventually up on the YouTube channel as well. I've got a bunch of short self-help videos um, I definitely recommend Be Yourself and Love It podcast. I really like it. I've listened to other, even though it's my own podcast, like I've listened to other ones. And, Just own uh, it. If you don't like yourself, then stop yeah. putting out content. If you like well, yourself, I mean, then it, put it out. <laughs> it, it, wouldn't be, it wouldn't be called Be Yourself and Love It podcast. Wouldn't, <laughs> would it? It'd have to be called something like despise yourself and kind of uh, meekly penetrate the world with your meager content podcast or something. But that's but, such a long title. Yeah, yeah, I know it's it's quite goth though. It might pass <laughs> with that, pass for that. Yeah, I most people who want to speak to me connect to me on Facebook, and I'm cool with that. I think that's a good way to communicate. Mm. Uh, I'm not full yet, so you can still add me. Um, <laughs> uh, I guess asking me what people should do during the coronavirus crisis to stay on the straight and narrow is putting kind of like a lot of responsibility on me. But mm. you know, there there. There, I just say most of it is not really that profound. Like a lot of people, people say that, you know, if you don't take exercise, uh, you get depressed, like taking exercise is some kind of antidepressant. It's really the under, other way around. This body, this system is made to move. And if you lived a couple of hundred years ago, you'd be doing 10 to 20 times mm -hmm. as much physical activity as you are doing now. So not moving your body depresses the system. Mm -hmm. The system gets depressed. And that's why, you know, we get sluggish. We can't be bothered doing anything. Our brain gets cloudy. It's everything. The, I like, I work as a therapist, as you, as you mentioned, and I have methods when it, to talk, help people talk through their issues so that they can remove the emotional memory from their system. I am... Um, well, you know, you know, you don't forget the shit that happened to you, but it, uh, um, but you can think about stuff that you used to think about that still gave you a hard time or your system felt depressed without having, without feeling really crap about it, without, yeah, and things like that. When you go through, as you go through the process of therapy, if you've got a good therapist, the reason why I say that is the the, the in relation to what we're talking about is. I like to see the human being as a biological organism that has needs, you know? Mm -hmm. We've got physiological needs, we've got 
um, social needs, we've got emotional needs. Um, physiologically, we've got much the same needs as animals do. You know, we need to eat, drink, pee, poop, uh, not take in poison. I'm, I'm a girl, I don't poop. All oh, right, okay. And and when you and it's not and, and when you fart like little angels. I don't do that angels, either. I with, just kind of yeah, hold it in until pink. I get really angry and passive aggressive. Well well that's the that's the that's where the pink angels come in. <laughs> they, they 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 take it out of you in little packets and they fly away. This is true. Like Cupid. Yeah. Like oh, little fairies, little fart fairies yeah, flying all around me. <laughs> I am so, ridiculous. I apologize. Yeah, especially because yes. you're ginger. Ginger <laughs> yeah. girls, ginger girls fart perfume. They, we do. Yes, Janelle. that's why we were considered witches at one time because everybody mm. pretty much smelled bad up until about the 20th century, and so before that, we were the only ones that smelled good. Um, right. Therefore, we were thought to have some wicked, uh, you know, some kind of witchcraft behind us. This is all very sciencey and very historical. Please go look it up. But you. <laughs> Well, all I can say is you've certainly bewitched me. <laughs> um, so, okay. So turning from me bewitching you, let's go to, um, well, we'll stick on the COVID and then I just kind of want to find out uh, how you became a libertarian after that and um, we can play a little game. So, okay. like I said, Ginger Archie, we just do conversations here. Um, I like to just That's talk to good. people. I like that. Okay. So... From my bewitching self, I thought of these questions for you, Sir Samarov. I know Excellent. you're not knighted, but I'm going to call you that anyway. Um, but why shouldn't I be? I am the. No. I am. Uh, they, they wrote that book. You better about I get to that queen before she kicks the bucket. I heard she has COVID. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I like dark humor. Yeah, me too. Okay. Well, but not yours. Because <laughs> it's not funny. <laughs> No, just because you're a bitch. <laughs> oh, I am. But that's a good thing, I think. It's just a tough exterior. Inside, I'm a teddy bear. And inside, the teddy bear is another bitch. All right. Yeah, somewhere <laughs> deep down, there's a decent human being in me. But it's like really, really, really deep down. <laughs> you haven't found it yet, but you're pretty sure it's there. Hmm. Okay. So uh, coronavirus, we talk a little bit. Um, and I think you should definitely link. I'll try to put it on there. Um, how to find Anthony. Um and uh, it's definitely really important to seek therapy for anybody anytime. I'm a big fan of it. And I would also oh, well, say- Well, I'll tell you what, since we're in the midst of this yeah. show, anyone who's listened this far, if it's something that some people have considered, but they're not too sure yet, if you let me know that you heard me on Trisha's show, shoot me a little message, um, I'll do a free introductory session with you. No commitment, free of charge. You might just get something out of that and then want to go away. I'm very cool with that. Um, even if you never want to speak to me again afterwards, I enjoy them. Obviously, I can't do like 100 a week, but um, if a few of you get in touch, I could, especially now with this COVID shit, I can definitely squeeze some freebies in. I think that's amazing. Oh, hello, lovelies. Did you hear that? So definitely uh, you can find Anthony on Facebook. You could send him a message if you're not friends with him. Mm -hmm. It just goes to a different box. And um, I think that's really awesome of you. Thanks for doing that. Well, um, I am an awesome guy, Trisha. <laughs> Deep down inside somewhere. Deep down somewhere. Okay. So something that you've kind of had to exhaust, um, well, your playbook maybe. <laughs> Maybe that sounds mean. I don't know. But uh, you talk about it a lot because you know a lot about it. You wrote a book about it, um, Universal Basic Income. Now, I would not at this time do a show with you about that, except for the fact that we did just pass a bill. Well, it passed in the House and Senate. Um, I think it still needs to be signed or it's getting signed today, which it will. Um, and what it effectively does, and this is a little bit different than every stimulus that's passed in the United States, it pretty much gives every American making under a certain amount a paycheck and then it may repeat itself next month if we're still under quarantine. Uh, the terms of it are, if you make up to $75,000, you get $1,200. Um, if head of household wow. stops at one twelve five, and then married couples one fifty, dollars and then $500 per child, that's unlimited. And then also, um, if you're on a fixed income, they call it, or government income, um, you still get it. So it pretty much goes to everybody unless you make a lot of money. I think you get wow. some after a certain amount. I want yeah. this check. Yes. Can I don't get this check? What the fuck? I like to call them Trump bucks. Um, so I have a lot of concerns with that. I'm not necessarily saying don't take it. I think those anarchists I know that say don't take it, 
I'm like, shut the fuck up. Of course I'm going to take money that was already yeah. stolen from me. I, whatever. Well, <laughs> but- well, the thing is, you know, if you don't take it, you've got no advantage over your ideological enemies who do take it. Mm-hmm. Very good point. Uh, yeah. So even just, I know um, I do have some anarchists that listen and then we just have some like newer libertarians and we're libertarian. So it doesn't sound like a negative thing off the bat. I personally would say take it. I would like to invest mine in silver um, if I, if my bills aren't too great um, and use it for something that's more lasting than fiat. Um, but what would you say would be the negative effects eventually from taking a $3 trillion uh, amount oh. of money from the government that we're borrowing? $3 trillion. $3 trillion. Yeah. Well, I mean, and dispersing it mostly to corporations, but to each American, basically. Uh, what, what happens after we do that? Well, I'm kind of ha- I, I prefer that they give it to regular people than to bail out Boeing or whatever, but that's really neither here nor, here nor there uh, because inevitably it's going to be both, right? Did they not like, did the Fed not spend a trillion buying up bad debts and uh, yes. make another trillion of something on, on top of that? So the question, well, first of all, the obvious point is despite the dollar going to the moon for now, this is going to have a massive deflationary effect on the value of the dollar in the long term and the purchasing power of the dollar. And it's actually good for very wealthy people who everything they've got is in assets, especially you know property and um, what have factories, machines, etc., and what have you, as they you know they won't be subject to the negative effects of price inflation. But anyone that saved is obviously going to be at disadvantage when they are actually the ones that did the responsible things and anyone who's in debt in other words being irresponsible the more irresponsible you've been the more in debt you are the more you benefit from the deflation the inflation but the question is fundamentally where is the money going to come from sorry to sound like a like 1980s uh, Thatcherite conservative. No, Where's the money going to come from? No, but uh, please explain that to people because I don't think a lot of people have a basic understanding and I don't always blame them. You know, people have to go mm. to work and live their life. They can't worry about the, the uh, government devaluing currency. So how does it work? Basically, how does my dollar become worth less? Oh, right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, the, th- the, the dollar enters the economy via the Fed. And when it does so, the the politically well-connected tend to get it. Uh, and at that point, it's at its highest value. But the, the dollar's value is basically linked to the number of goods and services in the economy. And as people, as the politically well-connected spend it, uh, put it this Put it this way, if it, the the dollar, we've all heard of the law, law of supply and demand. I wasn't, I didn't know that, I, I didn't know that I was going to be asked to explain this economic question. Um, so, <laughs> Sorry. So, uh, the explanations in my book, be your, uh, be, be your book, Universal Basic Income For and Against. Please buy now on Amazon. That's the cliffhanger. <laughs> well, basically, as if you think of dollars as like a commodity, like anything else we know that when the supply of a commodity goes up if the demand stays the same it becomes worth less so if there's suddenly a ton of i don't know um pianos coming onto the market then suddenly everyone goes well i can get a piano much cheaper than that uh, than that one that's up there on craig's list because there's so many of them um similarly with the the dollar there's more dollars around more people are spending them the value of the dollars become worth less unless the same amount of stuff is made to balance mm-hmm. that out. No extra stuff is made when they print money. No extra when you, stuff is and made when you all. shut the economy down and 30% exactly. of Americans are out of work, it's much less than would normally yes. happen in the flux. So I, I'm, I don't even know if the dollar is going to make it another couple of years. I don't know if it's going to be some, some very intelligent people think it's not going to be hyperinflation or anything like that. I really don't know. I'm not, I'm not, <clears throat> I know quite a bit of economic theory, but I'm not like Mr. Predictions man or anything like that. I think the thing is a lot of people talk about uh, 
as in, well, this is just a sort of a paper exercise. We're going to put this mu much money, we're going to pump this much money into the economy, we're going to borrow it or we're going to print it. But someone, somewhere, in fact, a bunch of people are going to actually be admitting far lower standards of living, whether they need to move to a lower house or their business, their family business goes out of business or they're not able to um, send their kids to the activities that they're used to sending their kids to. And yeah, I guess in inflation is going to spread it around a bit so, so that everyone's slightly taking the hit. But it, it's not necessarily... It's not necessarily going to harm those who are the richest or most politically correct uh, connected, which is what the left always want. You know, tax those greedy millionaires and billionaires. That's what we want. Uh, it's not necessarily going to be them and who who are suffering because of they're not going to be paying their way out of this crisis. The very they're wealthy can withstand power. inflation and crisis uh, to a large degree because. Mm -hmm. Because as the price of everything goes up, as the price of everything goes up, so does the price of their assets go up with everything else. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, um, it's a difficult question, though, I think, in this time. Well, actually, I think you explained it really well in a pretty simple way. Um, just basically, dollars aren't magic money, so there has to be some value, and that's how you exchange it. And so if we keep printing more of this magic money, somebody's going to have to produce some value for it somewhere, and somebody's going to lose out on it, and it's going to be the poor people that lose the most. Inflation I'm, is the highest tax on poor people. It's the worst tax that you could that you could have if you're poor. I totally need to get you as a translator for the kids' version of Scottish Liberty Podcast, right? <laughs> Do I sound like a kid? <laughs> no, you no, you, you, you explained that at a level that someone in school in school could understand. So whenever we do Scottish Liberty Podcast, we need to also, hey kids, it's time for Scottish <laughs> Liberty Podcast with your host, Trishy <laughs> your man. And then you go, then you just explain everything I just said that way. I need, yeah, that would be great. You I actually, I like speaking in host. simple terms, um, and I always, although I, I really enjoy listening to the talking heads, and I learn a lot yeah. um, from them, and you, uh, you obviously have a better way with words than I do, but I'm I find sure. that simplifying things sometimes is just better than speaking a lot, and so since I'm not good at speaking a lot, <laughs> especially yeah. a written word, the, then the I'll just simplify. <laughs> For me personally, the most difficult thing about writing is writing simple play most of the editing process revolves finding simpler and simpler ways to say what i've already said so if you can explain things simply that's a real talent well i think it's hard especially if you sit down and write a book and you know this i don't think people uh, people you know don't understand if you're a writer and you're publishing or self-publishing or whatever like to produce a book that's a lot of work mm, and so i think so yeah I think a lot of people have this idea that you're just on a typewriter uh, from some movie in the eighties and all of a sudden pops out this book and you make money, but editing is really difficult. I think if you're brilliant, when you have to cut things out, you feel like people aren't going to get the whole of what you want to mm -hmm. say. But if you make a book like that, then I mean, war and peace is a great book, but how many people can say they've read it cover to cover, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, li the masses need libertarianism too. <laughs> So. so universal basic income for and against the war and peace of libertarianism. <laughs> Just kidding. It's a really, really thin, it's a very short book. It, it is very readable. And again, you can go to Amazon and find, find his, uh, Anthony's UBI book. Or I say UBI a lot because it's uh, lingo, sorry. Universal basic income, which That's actually right. has become popular, uh, popularized yeah. even more so through the uh, election cycle with Yang, yeah. even though he dropped out. So uh, of course, yeah. Trump just one upped him with twelve hundred bucks instead of a thousand. So, whoa! <laughs> if you do want your copy signed, then message me on Facebook, and that can be arranged for you. I've been sending them out recently. Oh, very cool. Okay, yeah. I so I don't do these too long because um, they're That's I usually good. try to do them for the drive time. So we're gonna play a game, Anthony, and I'm gonna have oh, you on again. I love cause... games. All right, because I'm super fun to talk to. Yes, you are. I'm. Sure. I like okay. Think so. 
this is pick your poison. I'm sure you've played cards against humanity or whatever. Pick so, your poison. Mm -hmm. So you have the option of choosing between two different tasks or actions that you need to perform. Oh um, my God. I will randomly pull them from the deck. Not this again, Trish. Your last time <laughs> you up. blackmailed me with a Skype video. <laughs> I will never look at that um, ironing board the same ever again. This doesn't or, exist, people. And don't nightmare. message me for it. Look what you did. All the incels are going to message me again. I finally slowed the rate of dick pics down. I can, I, I can still hear those chains clanking in my ears. <laughs> <Shut up. laughs> All right. Anthony Samaroff, Scottish libertarian extraordinaire. You have like to that. choose. Can I put that on my business card? You can. It's official. I said it, so it's real. <laughs> Let's do it. Okay. So... Do you pick your poison? Do you air dry after every shower or be unable to feel empathy? If I so, what's air dry? Sorry, you don't get to use any type of towel, linen, or cloth. Well, do you know what? There's relative merits to both. I think uh, if I didn't have any empathy, that I wouldn't feel the excessive amounts of empathy I feel maybe for some people who don't really deserve it. In fact, I think an excess of empathy probably led me to my profession because it's quite useful being empathetic. Uh, but I'd find a new profession. So I could see an advantage to that, even though it comes at a disadvantage as well. The kind of like not being able to dry yourself after a shower, I do quite like to grab the towel quite quickly, but maybe it's going to toughen me up. So I'm going to be the first person to pick both poisons. I will no <laughs> longer. So one is the poison, the other is the cure. <laughs> yes, yes. They're both good for me. And if I don't have any empathy, I might not even empathize with myself being cold when I come out of the shower. <laughs> so. You'll just be numb inside. Yeah. <clears throat> I can say I've played this with a lot of people and you're the first person to pick both poisons and look at one as a positive. So, I just live, I just like to live dangerously, Trisha. That's sure all you is. do. You know, I'm Running so around in the woods in the Scottish yeah. highlands with axes and skirts. All right. So, you're going to, oh, you have to pick another one. What's this? I never <laughs> agreed to do two games. It's, it doesn't matter. One game a day is my limit. This is <laughs> right, that you, this is an implied contract. Oh, that's it. Implicit. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I thought I thought this show was going to be explicit. That's what you told me before. Yes, I mean as far as saying the fucks and the shits, Anthony. Okay. 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 <laughs> Let's rock. What's this game? Your poison. You either the same. Yes. I thought you were gonna there was a No task different cards. No different okay. cards. Okay. I like to Pick talk. My Tasks are for the plebes. No, I'm just kidding. All right. You either get a tattoo of a six pack of beer on your abdomen. Or ride a skateboard down a mountain road. <laughs> well, me driving a skateboard down a mountain road means I die, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> so I'm going to have to uh, sacrifice, make the sacrifice. And, and, and if anyone's like, hey, Ant, like, why the fuck have you got that tattoo <laughs> there? It's like, well, I picked my poison. <laughs> that was a good answer, Anthony. All right. We're going to do one more. And then we're going to do some little shout outs and wrap up. Okay. But I'm still making you pick your poison now. Pick my poison, Trisha. Oh, God. Of course, this gets picked for you. <sighs> <sighs> Anthony, pick your poison. Would you rather always be sweaty or have your clothes start to disappear after one hour of wearing them? <laughs> this is a tough one. That would be extremely inconvenient. That would Look be extremely them. inconvenient. But the thing is, I smell like a meadow. So even if I sweat. <gasps> Do you have some ginger in blood shirt? in you? Is that why? Um, Do you know, this is a joke that only works <laughs> with when the gender roles are reversed. Oh, okay. What, are male, are male gingers evil? Well, males can go, Do you have some ginger in you? And if she says oh, no, God. he can go, <laughs> Here we Would go. Would you like some? But a bump. 
Okay. And on that, folks, I'm going to give you a shout out where people can find you. You've got some books out. Um, what, what are you working on right now first? Uh, I'm working on a book on healthcare reform that's taking forever. But when it comes out, it's going to be amazing. Ooh, very cool. I think. Um, but yeah, you, you just hold on for that. I'll be doing the Libertarian Rounds again, I'm sure, when it's complete. So I, my name's spelled without an H, A-N-T-O-N-Y. S A W M E R O W F. Uh, you should add me on Facebook. I, I like hearing from you guys. And yet, yeah, I just reiterate there is a free therapy session. Um, and also, you should buy a copy of Universal Basic Income For and Against. It's a really, really good book. And it's a great introduction for leftists into libertarian approaches for taking. Uh, for improving those living standards of those at the bottom of the economic ladder. I really believe that if we're to get anywhere as libertarians, we need to talk about the stuff that people care about. And right now that's stuff like poverty, right? Universal basic income for and against isn't just about UBI. Um, it covers a lot of stuff. It's a really great introduction to thinking economically. And I, I know that you'll get a lot out of it. So message me on Facebook and request your signed copy if you prefer us. Otherwise, you can just go on Amazon and buy one. Thanks so much for having me on Ginger Arky. Oh, thank you, Anthony. And you again, that's A-N-T-O-N-Y. Yeah. That's oh, I am. Thank you. I have my anarchy halo around my ginger hair today. So that's it. Yeah. Your halo is held up only by your horns. Yes. <laughs> That's a good Dolly Parton tune, but I digress. You definitely um, make me horny. So. <laughs> well, you heard it here Just first, kidding. folks. Yes. So as again, uh, I would like to thank everybody watching. This is going to go live on Facebook. I'm hoping that Anthony can join us so he can kind of comment on your posts. But you can find uh, Ginger Arky on iTunes, Spotify, but just go to wearelibertarians.com. Find some other great shows there. Look for Anthony Samroff on Facebook. Um, and his uh, Scottish wit extraordinaire um, and friend. Him. People can follow you if you're out of uh, friend space as well, right? Yeah, if you're on your iTunes just now, you can also subscribe to Scottish Liberty Podcast and Be Yourself and Love It Podcast. They're good shows. They both feature me. How I, do, I do like Be Yourself and Love It too. And it's it's very, um, it's easy to follow. And you do like quick little shorts too. Yeah. yeah. A lot of them are like 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. Very cool. Well, thank you so much, Anthony. And I'm going to end the show like I always do. I want to say thank you so much, my lovelies, for watching and fuck the state. Fuck the state. And we're going to stop here.